Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Rosa. You saw that. <laughs> Amazing. Well, how can I? Okay. Hey, Cammie. Hey, Lauren. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jessica. Is. Yep, this is my um, tech face. So enjoy this <laughs> while I figure out. Okay. Hey, Joseph. Hey, everybody. So um, I'll say this in the announcements later, but oh, great. You have your candle ready. Great. Um, I'll say this in the announcements later, but I want to just tell you now that um, over the weekend, Zoom has changed their, how they set up meetings. They require a password. Uh, so the information that went out on Friday to help you get into our Zoom coffee hour after worship is not totally accurate. Um, so it's in the description of this video. Um, and then I'll also put it in the comments as soon as worship is over. But uh, they, they changed it. And so our tech team has made some updates. And, um, and we're just going to figure that out every week. We learn something new. Hi, everybody. Okay. Hey, Jonathan, Susan. Hey, David. Hey, Brandy, Brennan, Clara. Hey, Linda. Hey, Robert. Hey, Betsy. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Joanna.
Hey, Ra. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Dashiell fam. Oh, great. Hey, Becca. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Harold. Hey, Tish. Oh, Becca, that's great. You brought a friend. Hey, Ken and Mary Alice. Yeah, so Susan's, Susan's comment uh, here in the chat is the updated Zoom login info for coffee hour. And um, it's also in the link to the order of service, which is up in the description of this video. I'm pointing at it. That's not where it is for you. Well, it's in the description of the video. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, friends, I think it's time. Good morning. I'm imagining all of you saying good morning back to me. I'm the Reverend Sadie Lansdale. I'm the minister of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greensboro, North Carolina. Unitarian Universalists are open-minded about the sources of truth and meaning. We are spiritual seekers. We believe firmly that all human beings are precious and that all life is interconnected. We strive to build the beloved community here on earth in our fellowship with one another and in our work for justice. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you have found your way here, welcome. Our ministry team here at UUCG is me, Cindy Dillard, our Director of Children's and Youth Ministry, and Mark Freund, our Director of Music, and Julie Hamilton behind the scenes is our Congregational Administrator. Mark is taking two weeks of vacation right now. He has another job. He's a full-time teacher, um, but uh, you'll hear from him when he's back. In addition to silencing your cell phones, you can take this time to minimize distractions in your online environment. If you're joining us from your phone, you'll just stay on this Facebook Live page. If you're joining us from your computer, you might close your tabs and keep open only this window in the order of service. And a link to the Google Doc of our order of service is in the description of this video, and I'm dropping it in the comments right now. Virtual coffee hour is today at noon. Uh, there's information at the end of the order of service about how to access it, and it's different from what came out in your newsletter. Zoom has made some changes over the weekend, so we're gonna figure all that out together. Special thanks to Steve Pearsall, Susan Rossetti, and Jonathan Behar for their tech magic. Um, this is uh, a really wonderful time for the scammers to, um, uh, prey upon your generosity. So if you get an email that says it's from me asking you to buy a gift card, know that that is a scam. Text me or email me right away. We'll put a clarification in the newsletter. Uh, but clergy are getting hit by, um, by this kind of scam. And um, I will never email you and ask you to buy a gift card. So if you get an email that says it's from me and it seems kind of weird, double check. It's also the census and you should fill it out. And finally, um, you're gonna wanna read your newsletter for some important updates. Our board of trustees has voted to call a congregational vote to postpone our annual meeting, the rest of our pledge drive and our leadership transitions until the fall. They and I think this is wise because there's so much information we don't currently have. And when we make decisions together, we want them to be informed. 
So if you have any questions about all of that, send them to church president Betsy Lindsay, and all details are in your newsletter. If you're joining us for worship, but you're not a voting member of the congregation, that's not something you have to worry about at all. But uh, if you get our newsletter, there will be updates for you too. Now you might wanna find a candle or a chalice in your home to light along with me. I know some of y'all prepared for this week. Mine is actually made by Mark Freund. And our chalice lighting words are in your order of service. We light this chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, to remind us to connect in spirituality and in service, to care for each other in the world, and to create loving community. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and sing our opening hymn along with me. Number 396, I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. Imagining all of you singing with me. Will you join me in our unison affirmation? Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. In that spirit of unison, will you greet your neighbors in your home or in the commons? When we sing our meditation hymn, we allow the spirit to move through us with our breath. We sing the things we cannot say. We sing our prayers and our heartbreak, our hopes and our yearnings. We come together in song in this sacred space this morning. Will you stay seated and open your hearts for our meditation hymn number 123, Spirit of Life. Spirit of life, come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion, blow in the wind, rise in the Move in the hand, giving life, 
the share of justice roots hold me close set me free spirit of life come to me come to me Spirit of life, we gather in gratitude for this life and this morning. We celebrate the joys among us which are magnified when they are shared. If there is a word of joy on your heart, you may speak it now, lift it up in the silence, or type it in the comments for me to read out loud. for spring, flowers, family, spring break, technology allowing us to still be together in some way. Brenna's cousin is pregnant. Healthcare workers and their courage, frontline workers, church. Wisdom of leadership, home, an owl and a deer. A lot of time outside. Everybody helping us stay safe and connected. I'm particularly grateful to our tech team and to Brandy and Manessa who have been running a major behind the scenes project for uh, everybody to be connected and for an amazing board of trustees and their wisdom. Health, willingness to connect, caregivers. Mm -hmm. The courage to speak up and protect vulnerable people. Caregivers. Barbara Hands is recovering well from surgery, and she says there is no better time to be stuck at home than when everyone is stuck at home. Barbara, we rejoice with you. We're so glad that your surgery went well. We lift up those who are sorrowful within our community and outside. If there is a word of sorrow on your heart, you may speak it now, lift it up in silence, or type it in the comments for me to read out loud.
death tolls are rising, family members who are alone, people being furloughed, people losing income. those who are watching people die. Canceled plans and family gatherings. Linda's uncle Frank and his daughter have COVID-19. Anyone isolated? Ken's friend Randy. Fear and confusion, uncertainty. Brandy can't go to Brenna's ultrasounds and doesn't know if she'll be able to be present for her daughter's birth. Sorrow for those who die alone. Children who aren't enjoying a normal childhood, who are separated, being apart from our loved ones. People who are sick and alone. People quarantined with abusers, people for whom staying home is not safe. People who can't access mental health resources. People in jail and detention centers. People who can't get food safely, whose immune systems are weakened for any reason. And now will you speak the names of those people on your hearts, living or dead, that this community might hold them in prayer and in love. for Lewis, Michelle Bell and Teresa Egan, Dr. Vaughn, Megan and Zach, Becca's family, Brenna, Brandy's brother, anybody else who's an essential worker, Kevin Houck, 
Children in Cages, Nancy Gittin, William Kruger. Guy and Jen, Raxton, Amy, Amy, Rachel, Emily, Beth, Charlie, Heather, Philip, Jen, Mona's mother, Hazel O'Connell and her family, Nefer Lewis, Dennis Hands, Leonard, Bland, Antigua, Helen, Renee, Maria, Ben, essential workers, James, Brad, Phoenix, Natasha, Barbara, Barbara Hands, Manessa's pharmacists, anyone who is alone. Undocumented people left out of relief efforts. Anne, Carl Cook's mother, Barbara Hands, Laura Graham, Christina and Madge. teachers. We send all of these prayers, spoken and silent, up to the love that holds us all. During these next few minutes of silence, you can focus on something you're grateful for or someone you're remembering, especially today or just the pace of your breath. Will you find a comfortable or perhaps even more comfortable place in your seat and take a few easy breaths as we settle into our shared silence together?
Amen. Will you pray with me? Spirit of life and love, God of many names and no name, source of all. We come together today weary and confused. We are uncertain, we are not in control. We are disoriented and we struggle to figure out what to do next. May all who seek guidance be comforted and shown the right path. May all who seek relief be made to rest and be given what they need. May all who seek some peace find it even in surprising ways. May all who take care of others be protected and shielded. And taken care of in turn. We ask these things for ourselves and for those we love and for those we do not love. In your many names we pray, amen. Our reading this morning comes to us from Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel's The Sabbath. He writes, the meaning of the Sabbath is to celebrate time rather than space. Six days a week we live under the tyranny of things of space. On the Sabbath we try to become attuned to holiness in time. It is a day on which we are called upon to share what is eternal in time, to turn from the results of creation to the mystery of creation, from the world of creation to the creation of the world. I joined the Unitarian Universalist Christian Fellowship online this week for a small group reflection on Psalm 46 from the Hebrew Bible. This is the Psalm that contains that line, be still and know that I am God. Now there are many translations and interpretations of this Psalm and we Unitarian Universalists mine for truth in many different sources, through the lens of our values, reverence for life and the interconnection thereof, the importance of humility, mystery, reason, and respect. One translation of the end of this psalm reads, Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Another translation, which is a little more editorialized, reads, step out of the traffic. Take a long loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. 
Jacob wrestling God fights for us. God of angel armies protects us. During this group reflection, a colleague said, you know, someone told me a long time ago that the only thing I have to know for sure about God is that I'm not it. And so the only thing that you have to know for sure about the ultimate, the transcendent nature of the universe, the source of love that holds us all, the spirit of life and death, of endings and beginnings, the great mystery, the only thing you absolutely must be certain of is that it is not you. Heschel wrote, Whoever wants to enter the holiness of the Sabbath day must first lay down the profanity of clattering commerce, of being yoked to toil, and learn to understand that the world has already been created and will survive without the help of humankind. We are a community that contains and indeed celebrates theological diversity. Now, it is not true that if you are a Unitarian Universalist, you can believe whatever you want. Perhaps you have heard this shorthand. But we are not a loosey-goosey social club. We are a religious tradition with principles that guide our waking, our sleeping, our living, and our gathering in our congregations and in our homes. But we celebrate a variety of ways to know and name the divine. We embrace questions and translations. We know that just as joy and woe are woven fine, as the poet says, so are faith and doubt, moral clarity and humility too. The only thing you have to know about the nature of God is that it is not you personally that your actions affect the world around you, yes, but do not ultimately control it. That your spiritual obligations as a person upon this good green earth include resting as well as working for the common good. Your spiritual obligations include doing nothing, parking it, staying home, staying put, and hear me now, you do not have to learn a new skill. You do not have to advance your children's grade level. You do not have to write a novel or even one single poem. You do not have to plant a new garden. You do not have to call every person you have ever known. It's great if you do those things, but you don't have to. You are just trying to survive. And the way to do that is for as many of us as possible to stay home, to be still. Some of us cannot stay home. Either we don't have houses or we're essential workers, but if enough of us stay put, we have a chance at keeping the number of cases of this illness at a level manageable for our hospital capacities. Now, of course, being truly still runs counter to a lot of phone calls or emails many of you have received from me personally asking you to do something or other. And you have been all too glad to pitch in and help out to connect with others or to get someone's groceries or send money or host Zoom calls or build a phone tree or learn something new or rise to the challenge and lead in the way that you are called to lead. But the time for doing anything quickly has passed. And now we are slowing down the pace of life as we weather the storm together. I wonder if being still is hard on anybody else. It's extremely hard for me, I'll tell you. It's sort of a productivity thing, but it's mostly, I think, a control thing. If I'm doing things, 
if I feel busy and competent, then the world shall not fall apart around me. If I put in a garden, if I clean my whole house, if I start 20 new projects, then the earth will not crumble into the sea. And I know that if we were in church together and I asked you this question from our pulpit, I would see you laughing and nodding and exchanging knowing glances with one another, relieved that you are not alone. Being still is driving many of us a little batty. But there is a gift in it, though it maybe is not what we think. It is tempting to believe in times like these that Mother Earth is slowing us down that this pandemic is some kind of natural correction to the excesses and imbalances of our living upon the earth. But if that were so, and if you're not tired of, say, of me saying this by now, just wait a few months, if that were so, the only ones afflicted by COVID-19 would be the politicians who engaged in insider trading before taking any public action to stop the spread and the large investors and executives of the fossil fuel companies and those politicians whose loyalty they buy, and Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, and those few who profit from the suffering of the many. That would be divine retribution. But that's not what we are seeing. Communities with lack of access to health care are hit harder. Those who cause the waters to rise are never the first to drown. It is not the presidents and the prime ministers and the owners of the weapons manufacturing companies who send their children off to die in the wars. This pandemic is not a good corrective to human excess, though some good may yet come of it. Glimmers of hope yet endure in the stillness. Because it is true that the skies over Wuhan, China are bluer than many of its citizens have ever seen. And it is true that the canals of Venice, Italy run clear, a sight which to Italians who observe it jogs a distant memory. What is revealed to us about us during these days is that we are capable all over the world of slowing down and of stopping, of being still. We are capable in Heschel's words of first laying down the profanity of clattering commerce, of being yoked to toil. Be still and know that the world does not depend on you. In the moments when you can, be still. Let us resist the urge to make it all make sense, to call it good, to declare with certainty that we will come out of this unchanged. Let us resist the urge to look only on the bright side. But let us also resist the urge to proclaim the end of the world. Let us resist the urge to predict because we do not know. Let us be still, which we practice for a few minutes every time we gather to worship together. Let us be still and know that the world turns without us. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. I see Susan says being still is very hard. Yeah. Is anyone else struggling with being still? It's very hard for me.
Yeah, Joanna is. Mm -hmm. Lauren and Donna. And Betsy and Amelia and the whole Maddox family and the Lewises and Katie. Lonnie says no. Lonnie, teach us your ways. Hard for Becca. Marilyn's enjoying it. Teach us your ways. <laughs> All right, so there is some wisdom among us. It's hard for Danielle and hard for Sue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, so for Lynn, actually, the challenge is staying moving. And stillness is not actually what Lynn needs. Yeah. Tish wants to get out. Harold wishes he didn't have to. Mm -hmm. Heather's enjoying herself in the stillness. Good. Okay, some of y'all are going to teach a master class. And it's possible that I will be your worst student. Will you rise in body or in spirit for our closing hymn, number 391, Voice Still and Small? Voice still and small, deep inside all, I hear you call, singing in storm and rain. Sorrow and pain, still we remain singing. Calming my fears, quenching my tears, through all the years singing. Voice still and small, deep inside all, I hear you call, singing. In storm and rain, sorrow and pain, still we'll remain, singing. Calming my fears, quenching my tears, through all the years, singing. Will you join me in our chalice extinguishing words? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Go in peace, rejoicing in the power of love and connection we have kindled even here. You can place your hands over your heart for our benediction hymn, Shalom Havarim. This is a Hebrew song that means peace, dear friends, until we meet again. Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. Lehi Dryot, Lehi Dryot, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom.
Shalom Hanavim, Shalom Hanavim, Shalom, Shalom. Lahi Jayot, Lahi Jayot, Shalom, Shalom. One of the ways that we live out our mission to create loving community is to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and to the good work of our community partners. If you'd like to make a contribution via PayPal to the church, you can do so at the link that's in your order of service. And I'll drop it in the comments. you can continue to pay your pledge online, which is important, especially for those of you who are still working or whose income is not particularly affected by this time. Your contributions are especially valuable now. As always, my minister's discretionary fund is available, especially for any of you who um, have been furloughed or lost work or are otherwise struggling financially, please get in touch. Um, and if you're still working and you are feeling pretty financially secure, this is an opportunity for you to contribute more generously. These are some of the ways that we take care of each other. Our offering will now gratefully be received. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and by this we live. You can take a moment after worship is done to listen to this postlude. And then after that, head on over to virtual coffee hour at noon. This gives you about 15 minutes to sit and listen to this music and then make a cup of coffee uh, and we'll see you at noon. The Zoom link is in the description of this video. But you can also get in touch with me, Susan Rossetti, Jonathan Vehar, and we'll help you set it up. Bye, everybody.